some people. And I'm not gonna make this very long because Jay did a wonderful job earlier. So, hopefully everyone can hear me. It's a little windy today, but it's beautiful in California. The weather is beautiful here. Um, I was freaking freezing, as I've said a million times, um, in Indiana and Ohio, but I loved it and can't wait to go back. So, um, just want to uh, give a shout out to Jay Moss. Uh, for doing a great job earlier on <laughs> kind of cleaning up my uh, my controversy <laughs> and wrapping it all together. Um, if you guys have any more questions about what that was about and um, what we're trying to do, we, we, we wanted to figure out a way to affect the unaffected. And um, we kind of thought that if we stopped talking about the negative bias that most people uh, who aren't affected don't understand about shared parenting and made it something into a positive thing that maybe we could get thousands of people actually protesting the corruption in family courts and family law. Um, like they're protesting this elite pedophile ring, I guess, in D.C. I don't know much about it. <laughs> but it would be really great to have thousands of people come out um, for us and our children, mainly our children. Um, so... We're working on ways to affect the unaffected, um, which was part of the reason why I made that statement or asked that question um, about if you are dealing with an abusive ex who um, kind of has your kids or is winning in court or is controlling the courts or whatever, um, you know, why, why, why do you have a kid with them? or two, or four, however many, <laughs> why? And I asked that question because I did it. Like, I did it. I had a kid with my abusive husband. I, I well, I know why. <laughs> I love my daughter. Um, but there's, there's really no reason good enough to bring a child into this world knowing that somebody's abusive. Um, did I ever... Did I ever imagine or foresee this happening? No. Hell no. Um, I, I didn't think... I didn't think I could lose my daughter. Uh, I didn't even think about him taking her, but... The fact that I lost her and courts allowed it, like, that's... Not okay. Um... So... But I did. I had a kid with a man that had been convicted of domestic violence against me. And, uh kid with him. You know, I think the moral of all of the questions that we asked and, you know, if you felt tricked or felt manipulated somehow, well, I'm, I'm sorry, that wasn't the intention. They were genuine questions or genuine statements that really kind of required some deep thought and consideration and, and genuine responses. Um, I don't understand how a right of a child became so controversial. Um, it wasn't about the word or the definition of equality or equal. It was literally about the word right. We fight for our rights. We win on our rights. Our children have rights. And I wanted to remind everybody that it's not about us all the time. Yeah, we're targeted parents and yeah, there's parental alienation, and yeah, we get the shit beat out of us, and our ankle's broken, and we have kids with abusers, but it's not about us, and it's about them. And I actually just, um, recently, just my, my most recent post was <laughs> that my daughter is being raised by her abusive father without a mother, and uh, she could be giving your son an STD when she's older, or getting pregnant, or be shooting up your school, your kid's school, will you be affected then? <laughs> you know? And that's what we need to be asking these people that aren't affected. Because the only thing that seems to affect them is fear. Fear. But they're not afraid of losing their social security. <laughs> you know, that doesn't bother them. They're not afraid of the corruption that they don't get touched by every day. It doesn't affect them. But I guarantee you, when my daughter becomes one of the over 50% of 
of adolescent teens that has a mental disorder. <laughs> a mental disorder that's directly attributed to family court? They'll be affected then. But it's not just me. You know, my neighbor could have four kids that's affected by family court. Then what? What if it's half the county? Maybe then people will be affected. Maybe then we can get thousands of people out there to protest family law and corruption and pedophile rings. But I guarantee you those thousands of people have not been affected by pedophilia. And I'm not saying that pedophilia is good. It's not. But how is it more important than our children being used to fund corruption and line the pockets of ugh, commissioners that don't even have children <laughs> never been married? How is it possible, by the way? Um, anyway. <laughs> I digress. Uh, so back to having kids with abusers. I know that a lot of you were upset by my question. Um, and it was a valid question. You know, I did it. 2008, he was convicted. Married him in 2009. Oops. But I was pregnant. And I loved my daughter. And I wanted her to be happy and healthy. And innocent and a little girl for as long as, as long as she could, because I didn't have that, I didn't have that. Um, so I, I made a deal with God after losing two babies prior that I would marry him if she would be healthy and if I could have her. It was selfish. And I think that's why we have children with these people because we're selfish and we want them and we want our, <laughs> we want our kids, you know? we. We want kids, and we think that they're going to change everything, and that they're going to bring miracles, and, and they do. They do. They, they bring so many miracles. She was the first person, the first human being I was ever in love with, and um, I spent six wonderful, amazing years with her, and I'll always be grateful for that, always, you know, always, but, and I wouldn't change it. I don't know anybody that would. I wouldn't change it. I don't regret. I don't regret having a daughter with him. I regret the choices of not protecting her sooner. You know, spending two years being beaten up and abused, controlled, not allowed to work. It's just suffocating me. I regret that, you know? And I think out of everything that we were trying to say with those posts is that it's time for us to start taking responsibility and holding ourselves accountable, doing the self-actualization that we need to do, not just for our children, but for us, because I think that we carry a lot of guilt, a lot of guilt. And then when we lose our kids to this stupid freaking system that it's really bad. It, it is. It's bad. But we carry more guilt. I think we did more wrong. <laughs> you know, because having a kid with somebody like that wasn't bad enough. Um, but I did it. And I can take responsibility for it. But you know what? She's amazing. I don't regret it. Um, so, back to affecting the unaffected. Maybe it's time for us to start taking responsibility and telling other people what the fuck we did wrong. I mean, maybe I should start telling more people that I had a child with somebody who was abusive, who'd been convicted of domestic violence. Maybe I should. Maybe that will affect them. Maybe there's a woman out there right now, a mom, who's going through the same thing and she needs somebody to tell her about it because when she goes into court, she's going to lose her kids. Or a dad who has never touched his wife or the mother of his child and needs to know that one of the first filings of one of these silver bullet bitches is a domestic violence restraining order. People need to know this stuff, right? We need to be telling them. Why are we keeping it a secret? Why are we not telling people the things that they should be afraid of? <laughs> there was a survey done that Trey Bian was talking about yesterday with Chris Hallett and I and and it was literally, you know, one of those surveys that the questions are pointedly asked to elicit the answer that they want to socially engineer our country and our, 
us and the way we think and our opinions and so they you know they ask these questions and um and uh they're trying to elicit these answers and the question was basically and chris i just say you come on so chris hallett if i if i got the question wrong um or if i say it wrong please let me know but um the question was basically would you rather have the government take care of you uh, you know, financially and health care and everything else. Would you rather have the government take care of you or um, have war on your own soil, be attacked? Like, what scares you the most? Or what would you rather have? And like, 90% of the people answered they'd rather have the government take care of them. <laughs> They're so afraid. People are so afraid. And for so many of us, we don't fear anything anymore. Like, we have lost everything that meant anything in our lives. And a lot of it's our own fault to some extent because we chose to do it with the people that we chose to do it with. But it's time to take responsibility and then move on and get over the guilt and stop being afraid. And making everyone else that's just afraid of their own freaking shadow, afraid of what's really going on in the world, affecting the unaffected. Go make them scared. Who cares? Who cares? Because you know what? There's a really, really good chance that my daughter could shoot up a school at 15 years old. 50% chance. Probably more by the time she gets to be that age. Who knows how much more corruption is going to seep into her life and into her little body and her brain and corrupt her. And Who knows what the statistics will be. She's just having almost eight. In seven more years, who knows? Who knows? Maybe she'll beat the odds like I did. <laughs> you know? That's what I pray for. I pray for the strength to beat the odds. Because it's not fair. It's not fair for her. So when I ask a question or I make a statement and you see the word right along with child, maybe you guys should pay attention to that a little more because we need to start focusing on our children's rights. We need to get past the guilt. Because we, we've suffered enough. We've lost everything for the decisions we've made. We need to just own it, own it, use it, and affect the unaffected with it. So like Jay said, if you have any questions, <laughs> if you need to reach out, if you need help taking that step in holding yourself accountable, taking responsibility, let me know. Because once you do, you find your worth. And once you find your worth, you're not scared anymore. And you can go help the other people who are afraid of this stupid stuff. Not be afraid of that anymore and be afraid of what's really going on. And maybe, maybe soon we can have thousands of people protesting this corruption and bringing our kids home. That's what I pray for. I pray that somewhere along the line, my bad decision, my bad choice, that I don't regret now, will somehow bear the fruit of something wonderful. Because I owe that to her. I do. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna go see my mom. And, uh, talk to you later. Take care.